there's a new, a new translation out there called The Voice that, that retranslates certain scriptures to fit in with emergent concepts. And one of them is, is with homosexuality. Basically, it's like when you begin to we get that low view of scripture and then we exclude hell, it seems like the next thing always on the, on the cart is sexuality and homosexuality, to be specific. We begin to say, well, that's okay. Once, you, once we begin to say, well, who can say this is certain about hell, eternity, the atonement, then we can also say, well, we can't really be so sure about this. Brian McLaren said we need to take a five-year moratorium in order to find out what the Holy Spirit says. We already know what the Scripture says. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Or do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor adulterer idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. The voice, which is the, the emergent translation, translate homosexuality as sexual deviancy. and takes it, takes it right out of the scriptures. Persecution. Sure, Jesus said the world would hate us. You don't think you really meant that, do you? Because with the emergent church, you're not really going to suffer persecution, per se, because you're, you're letting the doors open and everybody can come on in because hey, we're all, we're, we're all basically the same. We're all, as long as we're sincere in our beliefs, we kind of blend these all together. So the persecution aspect of it kind of goes out the window. But here's the thing. What do we do with those who are martyred for the truths of, of Christ being the only way, for the ability, the, the knowability of Scripture? What do we do with, with men like Huss, Tyndale, Wycliffe, or maybe even you. Okay, when we stand for those truths, because that's why we will suffer persecution. We don't suffer it for just believing in God. We suffer because we believe that, that the Scripture is authoritative. That's what men like Luther had to stand for. That's what Huss went, was burned at the stake for. Okay, because we believe that this is the Word of God. Not only do we believe that, but that we can know it's certainty. No, it doesn't mean we can master it but we can know that which God has revealed into it with certainty. So for all those men who have died for these things, if none of these things are really that essential, none of these are really that important, then their deaths were in vain. And I believe we're coming to a time where it's going to become more important now more than ever where we're going to have to face these things head on. And you're going to have that choice to make. Am I going to stand like an Athanasius that we talked about earlier, which I was almost tempted to play a clip from Wayne, but I didn't. <laughs> are we going to stand like an Athanasius? Or are we going to go along with the rest of the world? I'm going to end with this. Uh, it's a short video clip, and it really, uh, I think it states it well. Listen to me like you've never listened to me, ever in your life. We have got to lay our lives down for the purposes of God. This is not a Sunday school picnic, the Church of Jesus Christ. This is not an invitation to have continuous good times. This is a war for the souls of men. Come out from among them. Run for your life. Because this is about your life. It's not just about an opposing theology, a conflicting viewpoint on Jesus. This is about your life. My mind is forever branded with the story that I heard of police officers from the city of New York as, as people were fleeing from a crumbling building. There were police officers and firemen and others that were running towards the building saying, run for your life at their own peril. And in some cases, I believe they knew they were going to die, but there was a sense of duty. I was going up to God. I said, God, oh, Jesus, don't let my sense of duty be less for your kingdom than these beloved firemen and policemen were for those that are perishing in a falling tower. We're living in a generation when truth is falling into the streets. 
I want to be among those that are not running away from the conflict, but running into the conflict and say, run for your life. Run from Gospels that focus only on success and prosperity. Run! Run from those who use the name of Christ only for his personal gain. Run from those that are picking your pocket in the name of Jesus. Run! Run from Gospels that only focus on self-improvement. Run! Run from churches where men and not Christ are glorified. Run! Run! Body of Christ, run! Get out! Don't touch the unclean thing! Run! From churches in America and Canada where there is no Bible! There's no cross in the theology! There's no soul-searching word! There's no repentance from sin! There's no mention of the blood of Jesus! Run! It's unclean! Run! Run from churches where you're comfortable in your sins. If you come into the house of God and you've got sin in your life and you're not convicted of it, you're at a table of devils. Run from pulpits that have put political men who are using the pulpit of God for a personal political agenda. Run! Run from those who preach division between races and cultures. Run! Run! Get out! Turn it off! Get away from it! They know nothing of God! Run from ungodly, spasmodic movements and endless, empty prophesying. Beloved church, run for your life. Run from preachers that stand and tell stories and jokes. Run like you've never run before. Run! 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 Father, help us to run to the battle. Lord, eternity is at stake. The souls of men and women... Father, may we be those who, who do run to the battle, God, who will fight for the kingdom, who will fight for truth. Lord, even if we are, feel like we're in the minority, God, God, there would be a sense of your divine power and direction.